heavy topics are already hard enough to deal with without social expectations and negative self-talk getting in the way. If you're new here, hi, my name is Denise and welcome to Color Me Well, a channel where mental health and diversity conversations collide. Last week, Jacqueline and I talked about the social cultural expectations that really served as barriers for us in order to open up. In today's video, we continue to explore mental health conversation starters by looking at our current approach when it comes to initiating vulnerable conversations with others, as well as the self-talk messages we have with ourselves. So when you're talking to people in your everyday life, your circle, and we can start with family, but in terms of family, what was really difficult, I would say, at the time when it came to talking about emotions and how did you overcome that as time went on? I'd say for me, truthfully, I'm still trying to overcome those barriers of being able to to have these very vulnerable conversations with family and friends. And I do want to have these conversations. I do want to be able to address a lot of like emotional concerns. I do want to talk about or proactively talk about, you know, things that I, I think might be a problem if we come into them in the future. Um, but I still feel like we're dancing around those topics quite a bit whenever I, I bring them up. There's still resistance in addressing um, um, these sensitive topics um, overall. You know, how about yourself? How has that impacted you um, so far in your, in your current conversations? So I will say that growing up, like I said, it was um, very tough for me to talk about things and I struggled a lot with you know my parents I definitely felt like a lot of the time it was really tough for me to be able to have any sort of conversation around how what I was feeling I kept a lot to myself uh, but I would also eventually really explode emotionally and verbally and it would be so confusing because they would not know what was happening with me. I wouldn't even know what was happening with me. And that was really scary. I didn't really understand where any of that emotion was coming from. I would even say it went as far that in high school, I did avoid a lot of Sri Lankan people. I have a few of them now, but in high school, like because of the way that a lot of our, you know, a lot of female Sri Lankans are depicted, as being, like I said, the crazy brown girl. I always stayed far away from them because I just didn't want to get engrossed into that. I, I think I rejected my culture a lot because of that too. And now I'm slowly feeling a bit more comfortable embracing it. And it's really helping me to be able to feel like I can talk to you know whether it's my friends or whether I can communicate with other people of my background I, I definitely feel like I've been able to communicate better with my parents it's been really helpful because I have been going to counseling I've done it numerous times I think they've seen that they've seen how open I am about that and even just the people that I surround myself with I want to always be able to surround myself with people I can have those conversations with, but being able to process my emotions and really be able to talk about what's bothering me, which I've definitely expressed in the first episode as well. Um, but a lot of that just stems from, like I said, it just, it just felt for a long time I couldn't. I recently, it's getting better, but yes, I will say that every so often, I may slip, I may bottle everything up and explode a little bit, but I've been able to dial back on the intensity, which is not easy to do. But I think that greater conversations need to be had within our communities as to where these pressures are coming from, 
why it makes us into little tea kettles that are about to explode at any moment and how we can really tap into those conversations when they're happening, you know, changing our dialogue and being able to say, hey, where did this emotion come from? What happened? Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't even necessarily need to even, even be like that, but just being able to, to talk, um, whether it's friends or family through it, I think that's, that's where it's, it's really tough for a lot of people and takes a lot of patience and a lot of hard work. But this brings us now to the next point. I want to know what your self-talk is. And what I mean by self-talk is just what are you saying to yourself in those moments when you're angry, sad, frustrated, depressed, any sort of emotion that really gets you down? What are you saying to yourself in that moment? So when, you know, a feeling flares up, whether, and usually when it's something that's, you know, you know, related to frustration or anger, I tend to uh, stonewall. Um, I would, you know, much like you, I would tend to clam up um, and literally walk away from the situation. Um, and it's, it's almost like when, uh, it's almost like when I no longer understand my feelings because of that whole, I never grew up to understand what those feelings meant. If I no longer understand the feelings, then I need to step back to try to kind of figure out the connections on my own. Something that I failed to mention with Jacqueline when we were having this conversation were the messages that entered my mind the moment I hit that barrier. When I could no longer understand the reasoning behind my emotions, I defaulted into thoughts like, what did I do wrong? Could I have done better? Where did I fail? And this would lead me down almost like a spiral of self-blame. What ultimately um, I end up getting to is understanding that a lot of my feelings um, and a lot of the feelings I project or perceptions I project onto other people and you know my friends and family around me, um, while they may be based on how they've reacted or based on the conversations that we've had, my perception of that is really seen through my own lenses. And, and the more I'm able to step away and kind of process, um, you know, what biases I'm bringing in, what, what fears I'm bringing in, or, or maybe not even fears, but um, whatever insecurities I have in terms of my own capabilities to fight through something or to, you know, provide protection on something, you know, those insecurities that, hey, maybe I can't make this uh, uh, maybe I don't have the agency to make this situation better. Um, that's okay. And I feel that that's definitely a journey that I'm going through now. Uh, I'm still not perfect with that. It does take me a while to get to that point of understanding that that's where I need to be every time um, a trigger moment comes up. Um, but, you know, I think I, I feel that I've gotten to that point where I'm able to tell myself that maybe after a day or two. <laughs> How about you? So I want to first off start by saying that it is totally something that I do as well. I walk away and uh, sometimes it just takes being in another room to be able to, to figure out your feelings. Like I did that all the time um, and it's with all my relationships. I needed to just be alone with myself. A lot of my self-talk is, it used to be really... Um, toxic in the sense that I would say like generalized statements. So a lot of those generalized statements would really go into such weird territory of mm -hmm. like, you know, it's indefinite, like, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to amount to anything. You're not, uh, you know, nobody likes you or, you know, you're never going to, to, to be who you want to be. And it's, it's always those forever statements saying like, it's like everything is, solidified already and I always now try to stop myself when I say stuff like that it's very much like catching yourself in that moment being like hey this is actually not 
forever. This is not true. And you're making a big deal out of something and it's not really, it's not even happening yet. You know, your friend does still love you and they're probably going through a really rough time. And, or, you know, your partner might be tired today and that's why they're not really paying attention to you. So it's stuff like that where I try to create that sort of, it's like a, almost like a, a safety net or even a, mm-hmm. like a, a, like something that kind of tells me to look at the bigger picture and not at that person's actions in the moment. Just being like, hey, this person's acting a little bit different, but it's not because I... I don't know, spilled salt on the table. Like, it's just, you know, like you start to really cat- catastrophize everything in your head. Yeah. And so that's where I feel like I, I started. So what I do try to do now is I try really hard to really sit in that moment and think about where it's coming from. So if I'm self-talking myself, um, and this is something that I found very helpful, and I did share this on our, our Instagram, but it's really about sitting with that emotion and being able to say, this is tough. This is really hard. You're talking to yourself basically like you're talking to a friend. We give our friends so much empathy. And I think we don't give ourselves any sort of care when we're going through a tough time. So being able to say, hey, this is tough. And then being able to say there's suffering here, which I think is such a powerful statement. I remember the first time I tried this on myself, I was like, oh, the emotion that came with that was overwhelming, but it was the emotion that I needed to get out of my system. And then being able to say the things like, you know, I hope that this gets better for you. I, I, you know, maybe this person is just in a rough place and they need a moment, just like you need a moment. So having that kind of self-talk has really helped me to have better conversations with myself around these things. It's still a work in progress, just like yourself. Um, Like I said, I really hope in the grand scope of things that, you know, it's not only individual, that it's something that is grander scheme and that we continue to have important conversations with, you know, other people in our communities about how we can have open conversations and, and be able to talk to others about the harder stuff. Nobody likes feeling vulnerable, but it's important to open up even just a little bit in order to cultivate healthy relationships. We hope this series on mental health conversations help you or perhaps someone you love. So please feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on our next video.